Hey friends, welcome to this video. This is going to be another video on semantic segmentation. And here we are going to use the unit architecture to segment a person from an image. I will try my best to explain everything in this video. So make sure that you watch the complete video. We will start by studying the unit architecture. So here is the original paper and here you can see the diagram of the original unit architecture. So it shapes like a U and on the le left side is the encoder part or we can say the contracting path in contracting path the num the feature resolution de decreases and the number of filters that is number of feature channel increases and on the right side we have the decoder part or the expanding path in the decoder or expanding path the feature resolution increases and the number of filters or the feature channel decreases so let's go to the paragraph where the architectural information is there so you can see the network architecture is there. So this is the important part where every architectural details is, detail is given. So let's study it. So the contracting path follows a typical architecture of a convolutional network. It consists of repeated application of two three by three convolution. You can see in the contracting or encoder path, it consists of repeated application of two three by three convolution. And each followed by a relu. So we are going to have a 3 by 3 convolution and these convolution are unpadded and followed by a relu activation function and then a 2 by 2 max pooling operation which try to okay. So we get to know how what are the parts of the encoder. Okay. <clears throat> so here what we gonna do, we're gonna use two 3 by 3 convolution, but we are not going to use unpadded. We are going to pad them for our easiness. And after convolution, we're going to add the batch normalization because batch normalization helps you to regularize, regularize the model and increases its efficiency and helps in easy training. And next follows the rectified linear unit and then 2 by 2 max pooling. So this is the encoder architecture. And at each down sampling step, we double the number of filter channels, feature channels. So it starts with 64, then 128, then 256 like this it goes on and now every step in the expensive path consists of an upsampling of the feature map followed by a 2 by 2 up convolution so up convolution is is basically the transpose co convolution which increases the feature resolution the resolution of the feature map it doubles and then half the number of feature channels so if the initial input is like 128 by 128 then it passes through the up convolution and becomes like 256 by 256 and then we decrease the number of feature channels okay if the number of feature channels are like 512 then we are going to decrease them to 256 and 2 3 2 3 by 3 convolution each followed by real and the same what we have in the encoder just we are not going to use pooling here and at the final layer, a one by one convolution is used to map each of the 64 component feature vector to a desired number of classes. So in our case, the number of classes is going to be one because we are performing a binary segmentation. So you can see this paragraph give you a overall highlight, overall architectural detail. You can use this entire architecture to code the entire network. So let's first of all, we are going to build the unit architecture. And for that, we are going to use the TensorFlow library and within TensorFlow, we are going to use the Keras API. Let's say model. Okay, so first of all, we are going to import the layers from the Keras. Okay, from TensorFlow dot Keras layers. So first of all, we need a cone 2D layer, then a batch normalization. Okay, so let me just increase the phone size so that even the people who are watching this video on the mo mobile can clearly see the code. Next is activation. Okay. Next, we're going to have a max pool. Next, the phone 2D transpose. Next, we also need to concatenate the features, the skip connection. Skip connection are an important part of the unit they help you to just get the features from the early layers which are present in the encoder due to the depth of the unit some information can be low so these skip connection also help in recovering that information and it 
and while back pro propagation this skip connection help in better flow of gradients because now the gradient do not have to pass through each layer they just directly go to the each encoder block so that's how this skip connection helps next is concatenate the last is the input okay so i have imported all the layer next we are going to import the model class tensorflow dot keras dot models import model now first of all we are going to build a simple convolution block which consists of two three by three convolution and each convolution is followed by batch normalization and a relay let's start with it con block first is going to be the inputs that is the input feature map or the input image then number of filters let's say x is equals to con 2d num filters and a kernel of 3 by 3 kernel and padding is going to be same and this input is the inputs next is going to be batch normalization okay done input is x. then activation the relu activation it's also done and now we have to repeat the same thing again just that the input for the second convolution layer is going to be the output of the previous activation function and from here we are going to return the x the output of this convolution block so now we have this basic convolution block ready which have two three by three convolution okay now we're going to start working on the encoder part the encoder block so it's going to take an input inputs okay encoder block and number of filters so in each encoder is followed by a cone block and a max pool 2d a two-dimensional max pooling so it's like x is equals to cone block and giving it the inputs the num filters next is the pooling max pool 2d so here 2 by 2 put pooling okay and input is going to be the x the output of the convo block now we are going to return two things from here that is x the output of the con block and the p pooling so here x act at the act as the skip connection which are going which we are going to use in the decoder and p is the output of the encoder block you can also see from the diagram the unit diagram let's go to it here you can see these are the two three by three convolution and the output of the second co convolution act as the skip connection and this arrow indicates the max pooling so we are following the same structure so encoder is complete now we can go to the decoder part the decoder block okay it's going to take first the input inputs then skip connection feature map skip features this key feature are from the encoder block that is this x then number of filters okay let's start it's going to start with a transpose convolution so cone 2d transpose okay number of filters after that a 2 by 2 the kernel size for the transpose convolution is going to be 2 by 2 it's already mentioned in paper and I'm going to point out to that where is that paragraph okay okay so you can see every step in the expensive path consists of an upsampling of the feature map followed by a 2 by 2 convolution that is up convolution mentioned in the bracket so we are going to use a 2 by 2 kernel a 2 by 2 kernel. and stride is going to be 2 because we want to double the feature resolution and padding is going to be same okay it should be s should be small and give it in the input now we have the uh, we have implemented the transpose convolution next is the concatenation with the appropriate skip connection it's going to be x is equal to concatenate okay now you need to make sure that the uh, the shape of the x and the skip features are should be same 
that's why I have used padding is equal to same everywhere to make sure that there is no problem. And if you just make sure if you make padding is equal to valid, then there is some two or three um, differences between the 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 output of the transpose convolution and the skip connection from the encoder. So make sure you use padding is equal to same. It doesn't make that much difference, but it will reduce a lot of error in your code. But you can also try. Um, by padding is equals to valid also it's not an issue next is followed by again the cone block input is going to be x and then num filters so the decoder block is complete okay now we are going to build the entire architecture a complete unit architecture it def build unit and this function is going to take the input shape from the user first of all we will define the input layer inputs is equals to input input shape. okay next we start with the encoder block so it has four encoder block and four de decoder block and a bridge connecting it let's see the diagram again you can see first second third and fourth like this we have one two three four so four encoder block and four decoder block and a bridge connecting them so this bridge is simply the cone block two three by three convolution so let's start it if one and even encoder block first input is going to be inputs and we start with 64 see in the paper start with 64 and then double up to 512 and 1024 so encoder block gives two variable as output first is the escape connection and second is the output of the pooling layer next we are going to copy it change the variable name to s2 and p2 the input for the second encoder block is going to be output of the first encoder block that is output of the pooling layer and 64 is going to be converted to 128 Let's again do it and changing variable name S3 and P3. Encoder block input changes to P2 and number of feature channels are double. That's 256. Again, we'll do the same process. Next, 512 number of features. You can see by building the some these blocks these encoder block decoder block it is easy for us to write the code and it will easy for us to debug it if there's any issue in the in any of this part then it would indicate to the line here in the encoder or the decoder block then we just have to change that specific part not the complete thing so four encoder blocks are ready now there's a bridge between the encoder and the let's say b1 the bridge and then is cone block b4 or out, output of the fourth encoder block and number of filters is going to be 1024 okay now it's part time for the decoder okay, so the d is missing from the beginning let's mark it bridge now start with the decoder the decoder outputs only one variable say d1 decoder block what it take is the input from the previous block and the skip connection the skip connection for this block is going to be s4 and the number of filters is going to be 512 and like this we need to build another decoder block put a block and the input for this is the output of the first de decoder block that is d1 and the skip connection is changed to s3 okay because here we start doubling the feature resolution okay that's why if here it is let's give one example if here it is let's say the input is like 512 so here it is reduced to 256 and here it is reduced to 128 here it is reduced 64 here 32 okay now here we it's it, it will remain the same because no pooling operation is there 
so here the input resolution is 32 so now we need escape connection from the layer of which have 32 so these are the sizes of the escape connection not the pooling these s1 s2 s3 s4 so b1 has a size of 32 it passes through the the transpose convolution it will increases its res resolution and it became from 32 to 64 okay okay i'm sorry i just said there's one mistake these sizes are not of skip connection these are of the pooling layers of my mistake so you can assume if size of the p4 is 32 then size of s4 is going to be 64 so that's how we're going to concatenate it with 64 that's why we set s4 here and s3 here so let's continue with the decoder block and it's 256 now d3 is going to be decoder block output is d2 s2 and 128 again d4 decoder block d1 no no d1 d3 will be s1 and 64 the decoder is also complete now comes the final uh, output layer the output layer is going to be outputs like a one by one cone convolution layer output is going to be the number of channels and we want only one channel because we are performing a binary segmentation a one by one channel we are going to use padding is same and activation is going to be sigmoid and input for this layer is going to be d4 the output of the fourth decoder block so the all the layers are complete let's build the model now using the model class first it takes the inputs then outputs then name and also name this model in it and return this model now let's check this model once if there's any issue or any problem let's say the input shape first let's see 512 by 512 by model is going to be build unit input shape going to let's print the summary of the model okay so it will be the entire now is from in it also python 3 model okay this error so we invalid syntax and i know there's no comma here there need to be a comma here in this so these are some common mistake which every programmer does we can see the summary of the architecture the unit architecture is there so we have built this unit architecture completely without any issue so from here you can see everything the input resolution is 512 by 512 by 3 and the output resolution is the same just the change in the number of channels that is 512 by 512 by 1 so that is about the unit architecture okay i hope till now everything is a uh, clear so let's start now with the data set first of all we are going to visualize the data set and see what is there so this is the data for people segmentation it contain images and the mask so first of all let's see some of the image samples so here you can see some images let me just open some images so you can see images of different size and different types is are there so you can see in from these images we can see most of the images contain a single human and there are very less images which contain multiple humans so i believe there's going to be biasness in that uh, model which is the it train so we're going to so after training we're going to see how does it perform on multiple uh, multiple people if a photo contain multiple person that is two or three person like this image so how does it going to perform because this single people is there um, and multiple people images are less so these are the mask and you can see the black images is there nothing you cannot see can't see visually 
so you can't see visually because uh, it's the pixel are not in the range of between 0 to 255 they are in the range of 0 and 1 so basically 0 indicate the background and 1 indicate the foreground this foreground basically means the person we want to segment so let's start writing code okay then i'm going to i'm going to visually show you the mask also first of all we are going to import some libraries import os then numpy then cb2 we read the images and also save them then globe so globe we are going to use the globe to extract these images and the mask paths Now, first of all, we are going to specify the path, the data set path. Like, copy this name. So, this is a path for the data set. Okay. Now, we are going to load the images path in this globe os dot path path dot join. First is the data set path. And we want to load images so the uh, folder name is images we're going to write images slash and star so star basically means we want to extract the path of all the images so globe use pattern matching so it matches specific pattern so if you say star dot png so it's going to get the path of all the images which contain this dot png so we want all the images and like this we're going to do for the mask also Here we are going to specify mask instead of images. So let us count the length of the list of images and mask. Images. Length images came for the masks. So let's run this code. Okay, so you can see there are 5678 images and the mask. So let's sort them. Sorted. It is to make sure that we get the same image and mask. That's the same index. Okay. We just note like the image is different and the mask at the same index is should not be different, should be same. So Let's first of all split this data set okay into training and testing. Let's write a function def load data okay and it's going to take the data set path. Now let's uh, cut this from here and put it inside this load data function okay. Now we're going to we need to split this. Let's import one more function from sklearn dot models section. As should be small import train test split. Now we're going to split these images and masks on the ratio of 80 to 20. 80% 80 of the images, 80% of the data set is used for training, and rest 20% is used for validation and testing. So train X. Train term basic denote the training data and X denote the images. Train test split images test size that is 0.2 percent that is 20 percent and random state is 42. So make sure that you put random state. Okay, now we have the training images and the testing images. Same thing to do for the mask. Train y and test y. So y indicate the masks. Train test split masks. So make sure that you have same test size and same random state. Okay. Otherwise, it would cause an issue. So the number of images and masks in different the training and testing would be different. Now we're going to return these. Then this training data and testing data. So train X, train Y, in test X and test. 
Now what we can do, we can load this data here. And after that, we will visualize that data set by reading this path for the images and mask data set. Okay. Now let's print how many images are there in training and how many are there in testing. Training. Okay. Length. Train X. And also print the length of the mask path. Train Y. Same we are going to do for the testing. Length. Test. Length. Test. Y. Let's see. If the split is proper or not. Okay, so you can see we have 4542 images and mask for the training and rest 1136 images and mask pair for the testing. So this is done right. Now let's write some more function to read the images and first of all we're going to read the image. Read image. Okay. It's going to take the path, image path. First of all, what we need to do x is equal to tv2 dot I am read. We are going to read the image as RGB, that is three channel images, that is red, green, and blue. Path, first variable, and next is tv2 dot I am read color. So this indicate that we are trying to read it as an RGB image. Second, we are going to resize it. And we are going to resize it to 256 by 256. Next, we are going to normalize the image pixel by dividing them with 255. Okay, so 255 is the maximum pixel value. So anything will be divided by 255. So it will convert all the pixel value in the ratio of 0 and 1. So it would be then easy for the model to learn. Let's give it some data type. Floor 32. Okay, so we have given it a floor 32 data type. Now what we can do? Now we can return this array. You can to write the same function for reading the mask. Path. Path for the mask. Same x is equal to cv2 dot I am read in path. But here, but here it is not cv2 dot I am read underscore color. It should be cv2 dot I am read underscore grayscale. scale and these things are going to be the same both copy them here let me give you one more thing here the shape for the x is going to be 256 by 256 by 3 okay. but in a case of grayscale image it returns 256 by 256 okay and we need to convert it into 256 by 256 by 1 so we need to expand its dimension on the last axis. So let's do this. X is equals to np dot expand dims expand dimension for the variable x on the axis minus one. That is last axis. Okay. So we have written these two function. Now let's visualize some images. Okay. Let's say x is equals to read image. So training data set. So we're going to take the path at the index zero. Now we're going to print it cv2 dot im right. Let's name this one dot png and x into 255. Now you will you want why have we multiplied 255? Because we have normalized the pixel value in the range of zero and one, and you cannot see anything in the range of zero and one. You will see just black image. So I have multiplied with 255. So it will convert this image back to 0 to 255 range. Let's save it. Okay, run it. Okay, it's done. I can see we have this image. Okay. We have the image of this lady in a dancing pose. Now, like this, we're going to save the mask. y is equals to read mark 
pin by zero. Okay. TV two dot I M axis two dot PNG by into two fifty five. Okay. Let's run it again. No error. So now we have the image name two dot PNG. Okay. There's some issue here, I think. So let's solve this first because we can't see anything here. Let's see what the issue is. We are taking it read mask. Okay, okay. What I've done is incorrect. We need not to again just divide it by 255. Because in the mask pixel all are already in the range of 0 and 1. They are either 0 or 1. So we not need not to divide them with 255. That's my mistake. See? Let's run it again and see this time. But the, the issue is solved or not. Okay, so you can see this time. There's a beautiful mask appear over the in the lady in the dancing lady. You can see image in the mask. So now we will build the PF data pipeline for the training. Now let's create a function called TF dataset. Which we are going to use to create the TF dataset pipeline. And within this, we are going to create this function which we have uh, created now. This is read image and read mask. TF dataset. What is going to take is the a list of images path and masks. Okay. And let's set a batch size by default to eight. Dataset equals to tf dot data data set from tensor okay spelling mistake slices giving it the couple of images list a masks list next is going to be data set dot shuff equals to data set one and a buffer size Let's say 5000. So, what does shuffle do? Shuffle it randomly shuffles the element of the data set. So, it, it's going to shuffle the randomly shuffle the data sets for perfect sh shuffling. A buffer size greater than or equal to full size of the data set is required. So I have set the buffer size to 500, and we know that in our training we have nearly 4500 images, maybe something more or less. Okay, and in testing we have we have eleven hundred images, so five thousand size is enough. Next is going to be the map process. Okay, we are going to map. Let's see. data set dot map. So here we need to specify the function, a name of a function, and this function we need to create and is going to take the the individual image path and the mask path and return the image and mask tensors. Okay. So we need to create it after we are going to finish with this function. Okay, data set is equal. So next is going to be setting the batch size. What batch? And we have set a default batch of eight. And you can we can also change this. Data set is equals to data set dot prefetch. And we're going to set a prefetch size of two and return this data set. Okay. Now, what is this prefetch? Most of the input pipeline should end with a call prefetch. So that's rule. Make sure that all your TensorFlow data set pipeline end with prefetch. This allows the later element to be prepared while current element is being processed. This often improves the latency and throughput at the cost of additional memory to store the prefetched element. Okay. So now this is complete. Now we need to work on the, the pre-process function. F pre-process. What is going to take is the image path and mask path. Okay, let's create another function inside it. Let's say F and it's going to take the same image path and the mask path. So for let's decode it. Image path equals to image path dot decode next mask path is equals to mask path dot decode 
ओके सो वी हैव की डिकोडेड इट नाउ वी गोइंग टू रीड इट एक्स इज इक्वल्स टू रीड इमेज इमेज पाथ ओके नेक्स्ट इज बाय दैट इज मास्क रीड मास्क मास्क पाथ ओके नाउ वी टू रिटर्न दिस एक्स एंड वाई नाउ यू कैन सी वी आर इनसाइड वी आर इन वर्किंग ऑन द टेंसर फ्लो एंड वी आर यूजिंग द नंपाई एंड द सीबी टू हेयर सो If you want to use anything outside the TensorFlow ecosystem, then you need to convert it into TensorFlow operator or operation. And for that, you're going to use pf dot numpy function. So you're going to use pf dot numpy function, and it first it takes the name of the function that is f. Second, the argument that are passed to the function, and third is the Data type written by the function f, and these are float thirty two, f l o t two thirty two. So it what it written is image and mask. Okay. Now after that we need to set the shape for the image and the mask. So image dot set shape. The shape of the image is. 256 by 256 by 3. You know, images and RGB image. And for the mask, you can say it that shape is 256 by 256 by 1. Okay. Now we're going to return this image and mask. Okay. Now we're going to see if that stf underscore data data set function works or. So let's remove this part of the code. We create a train data set. Okay, EF data set. Okay, it's giving it the list of images path and the list of mask path. That is train X and train Y. Let a batch size to let's say twelve. Okay. So now what it return is if batch of images and mask. Okay, so the size of each images should be twelve. By two fifty six by two fifty six by three, and for the mask it should be twelve by two fifty six by two fifty six by one. Image and mask in train data set. Let's print it. Image dot shape. The shape is going to tell us if everything is correct or not because we already already know what the shape is going to be. Let's do one more thing here. To get rid of the unknown lines given by TensorFlow, C TF dot CPP min log level. Let's say to two. Okay, now we will get rid of the unknown lines given by the TensorFlow. We don't require that thing. Now let's print it. Okay, okay, we haven't defined the TF. Let's. Not a big mistake. Some com common mistake is there. Import TensorFlow STF. Okay. Save it, and we are going to run it. So, so let's see. Okay, so you can see the loop is running. We have stopped it. So you can see first is the, the sh shape of the images image batch. The so batch contain twelve images of size two fifty six by two fifty six by three. And mask also contain a batch twelve images with this shape two fifty six by two fifty six by one. So these are the batches for the image and mask. Now we also need to count how many batches are there. Okay, so that's easy. Doesn't take that much time. Okay, so we can do that easily. What we gonna do it? Let us give you. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have ten images, okay? Ten uh, elements, and we set a batch size of batch size of let's say three, okay? So the number of steps, the number of time the batches occur, is the number of iterations is like ten the total elements divided by the batch size, three, okay? So it's going to be three. So there is going to be three batch of size three. So we can say three batch, and each batch contain three elements. But if you total it three, three batch each contain three element, it should be nine. And we have total elements ten. So we have one more. 
step that is plus one so if any remainder is there we are going to plus it one so nine plus one not nine plus one just three plus one it is three plus one three plus one so like this we are going to do it you know calculate everything let's go start the calculation train steps is going to be the length of the training data the train x divided by the batch size batch let's say batch is equals to it will and if length of train x divided by batch not divided by percentile batch equals to zero then another thing and if it is not equal to zero then we need to add one to training step train steps plus equals to one now we can print here print train steps train steps okay we have the train steps now let's run this code see how many training steps so there are 329 training steps okay so let's do one thing probe a python shell and like 379 into 12 is going to be 4548 4548 you can see it's like it should be 3 78 into 12 and then 36 are there and rest the images which are left constitute the last batch it should be like 36 you can say 4542 minus 4536 so the last batch contains six images that's why we just check if the modulus is zero or not okay the pipeline for the data set is also complete and this is the old work regarding the data set for the training okay now we'll start building the training code now we'll train our model we have our unit model ready we have our data processing ready now it's time to train that model on the given data set let's import some libraries let's directly import them from here Okay, so so we're gonna need this like this and importing the TensorFlow first. EF code. Next, we're gonna import the build model from the model load PPY. From model import build, and we also need to import some functions from the data dot py file. From data import. First is the load data set. Load data. If now this if statement and our most okay. First of all, let's set some hyperparameter. First is let. Copy this entirely. Paste it. So this is going to be the loading the data set part. Okay. Let's again set some hyperparameters. First is the data set part, second input shape, which we need to give per model, and that is 256 by 256 by 3. Next is the batch size. Let's set it 8. Number of epoch for training, let's say to 10. I hope we would train the model on 10 epoch and on this small system. So, currently, I'm using a GTX 1066 GB. I think it would take time to train 4500 images. See, or we can train on or two, three epochs just that. Or just seeing how does it perform. Next is the learning rate, that it to 1 in minus 4. Next is model path, the path where we can use save our weights for the model unit dot h5 okay 
Next is the CSV path which we require during our callbacks. So I usually use save all the data in a CSV file. So the loading the data set part is also complete. Now let's build the TF dataset pipeline. So train dataset. Okay. TF dataset. Train X. Train Y. Batch is going to be batch size. Same for the valid dataset. TF dataset. Test X. Test Y. Same batch size. Test 8. So this is also ready. TF dataset is also ready. Now we are going to work on the model. The model is build u unit okay giving it the input shape that is 256 by 256 by 3 and our input is going to be 256 by 256 by 1 mask next to compile the model okay first is the loss as we are performing a binary segmentation this loss would be binary cross entropy okay next is going to be the optimizer is used to optimize the model and i use adam if i don't have any choice or by default i use adam the default the default of memory if dot keras dot optimizers dot adam in learning grid we have specified already above in the hyperparameters next are the matrices matrix which we are going to use to measure the performance so there are some matrix specified in the tensorflow let's use them also use that only tf dot keras dot matrix matrix dot mean i usually we take num classes variable and we have two classes that is foreground and background these are two classes zero and one next is tf dot keras dot matrix dot recall next is the precision copy this line so we have all the matrices are there let's if we'll run this code one time and print the summary of the model okay there's some issue okay okay i haven't specified a comma here let's run it again and see for any error fault or anything okay so you can see we have model summary print in the last so this means no error is there still everything is fine now let's continue with the rest of the part let's turn off this out now we will needs the callback we'll specify some callbacks 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 are simple function that are called at some point during model training and this point can be before uh, epoch start or, af or after epoch ends or before validation start after validation it can be anything there is a lo lo lot of uh, situations are there points where you can use callbacks so for this task uh, we are going to use some callbacks let's import them first from tensorflow dot Keras dot callbacks import more first is model checkpoint second is reduce lr on plateau spelling is third is csv logo and last is early stopping I'm going to tell you the function of each of this callback function. I have, have these callbacks here. The first is going to be model checkpoint. The model checkpoint first is take the model path where you need to where you want to save a model. Okay. The next parameter is the monitor. So monitor basically takes your matrix, which matrix you want. We want to monitor here we want to monitor the validation loss robo set to one 
so model checkpoint saves your model and also monitor your validation loss and if validation loss decreases then it's going to save the weight otherwise it does not save okay so in case there's a in this increase in the validation loss then it does not going to save your weight it is only going to save the weight when validation loss is going to decrease okay next is the reduce lr on plateau so what it does it reduces learning rate when a metric has stopped improving again for this reduce the learning plateau the metric is going to be validation loss the monitor is going to be well loss patience patience is basically number of epoch with no improvement in the matrix okay let's say five so if Mm, for the continuous five of op, there is no decrease in the validation loss. Then decrease the loss, not the loss, the learning rate with a factor of 0.1. You can specify factor here 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or you can specify according to your need. Probos is going to be one. Okay. Next is CSV logger. Okay, comma. CSV logger. And it take the path for the CSV file. CSV path. So it saves all your training data, all your training matrix value in a CSV file. And the last is the early stopping. So what early stopping does is it stop training your model. If it is, it reaches a certain patient. So first of all, we want to monitor matrix that is validation loss. Yes, then the number of patient patients is ten. So early stopping stop training when a monitor matrix that is validation loop stop improving up to a certain number of epochs the continuous number of epoch so if up to 10 consecutive epochs the validation loss does not decrease so we want the model to stop training. so it will stop the training now next uh, we want to calculate the number of batches the number of iterations okay the one which we have done here copy this line from here simply paste it here now we also need to do for the validation valid step okay length test x and batch change it to batch size now if length test x style batch size Changes is bad is not not equal to zero then increment in the validation valid step okay so now it's time to train our model by calling the fit then okay simply the final step is the fit function first we will specify the training data set for training steps training data set next is Validation data. Validations data is going to be valid data set. Next is going to be number of epochs. You want to train it out like say 10 epoch. So next is steps per epoch. That is train step. Next validation step. validation steps validation steps are going to be valid steps which we have calculated above the last is the callback now we can start the training let's start the training which is a mistake the common mistake everybody does also does this by mistake okay so you can see the training has started walk one by ten so let's train it to some epochs you can see let's do one thing reduce size so it would take five minutes to train it on one epoch let's train it on let's say one or two epoch and then we will see until then we're going to write the code for the test 
dot py we can do test ketone images from the internet so those internet images are going to show going to be proof that this model works correctly because he haven't seen those images test dot py test dot py start it's um So we need some random images from the web from the create a folder first images. Okay. We're going to save our images in this images folder. Let's download some images. Let's say Google on some images. Let's download some RDJ images of RDJ Robert Downey Jr. The Tony Stark favorite. Let's download this image. Save image. I'm gonna save it to desktop. Yt. Rdg. Okay. Let's try this time. Captain America. So let's select which image. Which select this image. Save image as. Save it. Let's try Thor. Which, which? Let's use these images. There are two people here, the Thor and the Loki, and you can see how it perform. The model perform on multiple images. Okay, uh, WebP, and I don't think WebP would would this would be able to read WebP images. Download these and see JPG as okay. It's a JPG image. That's fine. Okay, let's now a new character Black Widow. Okay, okay. Go for this image. Save image. Okay, we have downloaded four images. Now we're going to use our train model on these four images. Three minutes are still there. So till then we're gonna write the code. So we need to extract some images from this image folder. For that we're going to import the globe from globe import globe. And we're also going to import the TQDM. TQDM basically is a progress bar. Okay. Our main line is equals to now first of all we're going to load the test images test images going to be globe images slash star next we're going to load the model load the model we need to use the function tf.kera stored model stored load the model we're going to specify the path it is unit dot h5 i think that's the path now there's going to be for loop for path that is the this test images path for path in test images okay here we're going to use the tqdm as a, a progress bar so total um, going to be length of the test images how many images are there okay next let's read the image from the path i'm read path and we will read it as a grace not grayscale the rgb image cb2 dot i am read color okay let's save is copy of it in different variable over original image Now let's find the height and width, the original image, because we will resize the mask. The output of the mask would be in the shape of 256 by 256 by 1, and we are going to reshape it to the original image size. Okay. X dot shape. Now let's perform some more operations on the image. We are going to resize it. 256 by 256. 
next uh, just normalizing the pixels dividing them with 255 changing its data type to float 32 okay so till here the shape of the image is 256 by 256 should be it should not be 9 it should be top bracket so this is the shape of the image now and we need to convert it into a batch for format 1 comma 256 by 256 by 3 okay because the model take images in the batch format only so it's going to batch of one image so we're going to do is expand its dimension on the axis is zero expand dims x going to be zero so now it would change to 1 comma 256 comma 256 comma 3 now we're going to predict the image predict the mask Predict mask okay model dot predict okay we're going to give it the image x so now the output of the mask would be in the format 1 256 comma 256 comma 1 and we will convert it to 256 by 256 by 1 okay so pred mask is equals to pred mask not predict this will be pred mask 0 okay now we're gonna convert this pred mask to 256 by 256 to a 3 by concatenating the um, by concatenating the same image for you know three times so let's see red mask is going to be np dot concatenate copy this image three times red mask Red mask and red mask. Okay, on the axis two. Let's see if the model is trained or not because we need the train model. Okay, so it is trained on one epoch. Okay, so this is the result. The loss is forty-eight percent. Mean IU thirty-seven. Recall fifty-eight. Precision sixty-six. And the validation loss is thirty-four. Mean IU thirty-seven. Validation recall fifty-seven and validation precision seventy-seven. So I think let's wait for five minutes more and in this five minute we write the entire code and after this two epoch are complete we're gonna check our model on the on these images we have downloaded from the internet okay now just imagine the model is predicted its its value would be in the range of 0 and 1 so let's convert in the in the range of 0 and 1 it's not 0 or 1 it's in the range of 0 and 1 okay so it can be 0 0.9 or 0 0.1 so let's convert it into a proper value that is 0 or 1 and for that we're going to use a threshold of 0.5 so pred mask going to be pred mask pred mask greater than 0.5 so if it is greater than 0.5 then it should be 1 if it is less then it should be 0 now we can multiply it with 255 to get a proper mask so now if the value is 0 it would remain 0 if it is one then it would become 255 that is a white mask so that's how we get a proper black and white mask now let's change it data type to red mask is equals to red mask dot styp np dot float 32 spelling mistake again okay so now we have a predicted mask of the height and width that is now the predicted mask has the height and width that is 256 by 256 by 3 okay now we need to change the dimension to the original image that is the original image here this this original image same dimension so we have already high dimension height and width so let's resize this mask to death red mask is equals to cv2 resize red mask okay and we're going to give it width and i also remember that in the cv2 dot resize function first we give the array which want to resize the image array and the next is going to be take the uh, the resolution first is take the width and a height is going to be tuple of width and height not height and width. always remember that now let's change the uh, data type original image also original image which we have saved 
original image should be a stype np dot float okay now we're going to use open cv to use uh, to mask to use to mask uh, to mask this mask on the okay to add this mask basically onto the original image so then we can see the uh, highlighted region the person highlighted and the rest part is not going to be that highlight i think you're going to understand after i'm going to do the code okay, 0 0.6 cv2 dot add weighted add weighted Haven said that the print the mask the mask the binary mask and remember that for using cv2 dot add weighted make sure that both your images have same dimension that is here we're going to have same dimension that is the original resolution height by width by channel number number channel should be three that's why we have used this function to make sure that our images has number of channels three first variable in this parameter required by add weighted is the mask second is the alpha that is the original image on which we want to load this mask next is one minus alpha next is zero and then original image okay so original image now we need to uh, we need the name for the image so the path we need to split the path we need to save this original image on which the mask is plotted the path is going to be like images one dot png okay so what we're going to do we're going to split it like name is equals to path dot split on the basis of slash so now it becomes a list of let's say images and then one dot png okay so we need to extract this last value that is name with extension so we can do is not zero the minus one and even it has how many slash just specify use this path dot split slash and then say minus one okay now you can save the image cv2 dot im right let's create a folder save this save images slash name okay then the original image okay i hope the training should be completed till now okay so we have nine seconds left so let's wait for these seconds also and then we will test run our test script you can see this is a 10 percent loss in this is a 10 percent decrease in the loss the validation remains nearly the same increase in the recall and there's also increase in the precision that's a mark of improvement but here we need to train it on two epochs so the performance uh, would not be that good it would be like okay but not that excellent or it may not even be that good so we need to test it so so, so let's wait it okay the model is saved so we're going to stop it here so uh, we are not going to train it on more epoch so here are this so here is the data.csv file which is saved by using the csv logger you can see for two epochs we have the loss learning rate mean iu precision recall and here are the matrix for the validation data set that is validation loss validation mean iu validation precision and validation recall so it given overall information of your training entire training process and using those information you can plot the graphs using this simple library only okay so like if if you want to plot the loss for this let's say it's easy here it's open open office i also need to know where the chart is okay let's say i think object okay where the chart is i also don't know because i'm using it after a lot of time okay, okay there's a chart let's say line line straight a smooth line next next you can see okay if we haven't filled the column values but if we just delete it going to be so how are you gonna be deleted 
okay it's not <laughs> just being removed you can just get it aside and so what you can do you can select it select it like this i think and then again chart not this chart not this again the scatter point smooth let's say next okay, this time you can see the loss is written there because you selected this column the losses decrease and these are the box okay. now let's close this file on save now we need to test these images which you have downloaded from the internet so these images are obviously new and there's some problem with the image of the Thor that's deleted otherwise it would cause for some issue so we all know these images are never seen by this train model on a unit model which is train now let's uh, run this test.py script and we hope there shouldn't be any error and there is yes, one common error we haven't imported the tensor flow that's the most common mistake we are working in tensor flow and i don't import the tensor flow see how common mistake is that not common just stupid mistake okay so 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 okay so you can see no error is there and everything work fine so now we hope and this one thing is there we haven't created the folder save images so the images are not saved let's see okay save save images let's run it again and we hope this time the images would be saved in the folder let's open it okay you can see the highlighted region that is the this is the mask over the black widow you can see it's it's good as we have trained the model on two epoch and these are really new images for the model and from here we can see that model is performing really good if it is trained in two epoch and performing like this it is good and same for the captain america but here you can see the shield is also in the mask region and some region are not there so that we can say model is not trained well but here we can see the Im it's performing really very well okay let's add some more images okay let's say some actress hollywood actresses okay let's go on these three images this this image here we have three actresses three faces save them okay let's run it again this time we can see how it perform on multiple faces in multiple persons are there saved images let me reload it uh, okay so you can see it does it doesn't perform very well the middle image is okay but the left and right image are not that good still it's try to find some region but they are not uh, correct let's uh, take another image at this time take this image and see save image as i think if we train this model on more epoch then it would perform really well because if on two epoch it can detect images so good okay so it is complete now again we can see some images that just reload file okay okay here we can see the result are good if we compare it to the previous image here you can see it has detected both the humans correctly but in the second image it's some it's missing some reasons and that we can see it's because of the training so now we can see it uh, segment the people okay so now the thing is that how can you improve the result the first point is that which i'm telling every time is that train it on more epoch i'm not training it for this demonstration purpose i've trained it to epoch you can train it on hundreds of epoch 100 200 let's train it second increase the data set okay increase the data set by using data augmentation techniques but you can uh, use different model like rest unit deep lab psp double unit rest unit plus plus any model you can use i will give the link of all those paper 
in the description you can check them out and you can also try to replicate them okay so um, that's all for this video i hope you just enjoy this video and get some information so if you still have any query about semantics segmentation then please comment below and share this video with your friends on facebook twitter everywhere so that your friends can also a friend can also learn what is semantics segmentation so thank you have a nice day